So this question is a diagram question, which just means it's a question that does provide some visual input prior to the question. And this particular question, however, also, all the answer choices are also visual, right? We all have, we have these graphs, these four graphs here that have different meanings. So let's review the information provided up front about the diagram here, and then we'll see how that relates to the actual question over here. So the question says, or the information provided says, the glass pictured above can hold a maximum volume of 473 cubic centimeters, which is approximately 16 fluid ounces. Okay, so very straightforward information. They're just telling us how much volume the glass can hold. And then if we look at how the, how the glass has been um, uh, outlined here, how it's, we can see that we have a height of K, a diameter for the opening of the glass is also K, a diameter for the bottom of the glass, which is K over two, and then we have this formula for the volume of the glass, which is seven pi K cubed over 48. So nothing seems too tricky here as of right now. So let's just go on and read, what's this question asking us to find? So number 10 says, water pours into the glass slowly and at a constant rate. So that's probably gonna be important. It's slow and constant. Which of the following graphs best illustrates the height of the water level in the glass as it fills. All right, so if we go back to our glass over here, we see that, hey, this is a glass that gets, it gets wider as you go up. So then if I'm slowly pouring into this glass, it seems like the amount of liquid that I pour in is going to increase the height, or increase in height, but that increase in height should actually slow down as you go up, right? Because it has more space, there's more volume, each kind of layer, hopefully my, my drawing makes some sense, each layer of water has more volume to take up as you go up the glass, right? When I'm pouring water in initially, it only has you know that much area to take up or that much volume to take up. But when I'm pouring water in at this point, it has this much, right? Which is more volume to take up. So if I'm pouring it in slowly and at a constant rate, then it should take longer to move up a centimeter, let's say, at this stage, than it should take to move up in height a centimeter when we're just starting to pour that water in. So let's take that understanding over to our answer choices. So answer choice A says that the height of the water level should just be constantly increasing. So we know that that's incorrect because of our understanding that we just went over, which is actually the water level or the, the, the speed or the rate at which the water level increases should be slowing down as we go up. So choice B is saying that the water or the, the height of the water level increases in speed, right? So that's out as well. Choice C says it's pretty steep here and then it starts to taper off. This is gonna be the best answer for us. Choice C is gonna be our best answer. We can tell even by looking at choice D, which says it's just, you know, the water level just stays at the same height no matter what. So that's definitely incorrect. But what choice C is telling us is, hey, this is what happens when you're at the bottom of the glass, right? It, the height moves up pretty quickly because you have, you know, the, the diameter there is much smaller. And then when you're at the middle of the glass, right, you start to slow down a bit, but the height is still going up. And you continue in that pattern, right? The higher you go up on the glass, the slower the, or the longer it takes for the water level to move up or for the height of the water level to move up. So this question is very um, visual. There's not a lot of math to do here. So we have to keep in mind that sometimes, especially on diagram questions, we have to really make sure we took that time to pay attention to the diagram itself. And especially when we have graph answer choices like this, we need to understand, well, what does it mean to be linear? What does it mean to have a curve that's shaped like this or that, right? What does it mean to have a horizontal line? All of these graphs have meanings, so it's important because I definitely have seen this type of question on the test many times.